Welcome to In The Mix, a DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. I'm on a mission to inspire and support you in reaching your goals in life and business. Do you want to know the secrets to growing a profitable DJ business? Tune in to hear real life stories from DJs across the globe who have grown successful DJ businesses. DJ series. I'm your host, DJ Rundat. Today I have Thomas Heath. Hi, how are you? Hey, Michelle, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Yeah. Back in biz, feeling good, <laughs> getting busy. For sure. Getting back into DJ shape. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. refreshing. It's yes. Refreshing to be doing weddings in June. Yeah. It's been Ab a while. Yeah, Not absolutely. July. Absolutely. Well, let's start out a little bit. Um, how did you get started in the in the DJ industry? Well, it it's totally opposite of so many other people. Um, it was never, you know, music was music was always part of my life. I played violin when I was in school, but it was, you know, and I pretended to be a DJ when I was a kid with uh, old KTEL albums. Um, I can still remember the one album had um, Thunder Island on it, which is just a crazy, crazy 70s, 80s, 70s song. But um, pretending to be a DJ and listening to things like Doctor Who on NPR. And, but fast forward about, well, about 30 some odd years. And I was working a night shift in a factory and one of the guys that worked in a different area of the factory was playing music that I recognized. And then, you know, he would start, every time I'd come through, he'd say, hey, what song is this? And he'd play a different song. And, you know, I'd call it out and, you know, rarely stumped me, I guess is the best way to put it. And uh, so after, you know, after a couple of months of this, he'd said, you know what, I'm DJing a wedding on Saturday. Would you like to come with me? So I, I you know, I said, that sounds like the most ridiculous thing I'm in. So uh, by the end of that day, I was actually mixing programming and I was on the mic and it, I was hooked from that point on uh, a couple of years a couple of years went by and decided that um, I had a better idea and a, a different way of doing things than uh, what they were doing it was their it was their part-time gig it was mine too um, then fast forward to 2012 uh, my wife of 21 years passed away suddenly and we were doing DJing part-time but I still had a son in high school, and I didn't want to miss any of his stuff for the remainder of his uh, school career. So I quit my day job, and DJing just became my full-time career after that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a good it's a good career that you can work around your kids' schedules. You know, you don't. We. I always feel so grateful that every day when I wake up, it's not like I have to go to a job. I mean. It's for sure. weekends usually or, you know, occasional weekday. And that's been a big blessing for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really nice to be able, you know, and then you get to determine uh, what you want to do and how you want to do it. You know, I've always been a, a big proponent of tell me what to do or tell me how to do it. Don't tell me both. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the uh, the way I've gone about working uh, with my staff is I'll tell you what to do or I'll tell you how to do it. If I have to tell you how to do it, that's fine. You'll do it the way I do it. But if I just tell you to do this thing, so we want this end result, mm. uh, that, that's the way they manage themselves. Nice, nice. So how long have you been, um, have you, how long has your company been uh, not a solo op? So when did you make that transition like from a solo op to actually ha growing into a bigger company? So um, it was a, we were doing m multiple weddings when it was still part-time. Uh, so I'm going to say we're around 2010, 2011. Um, just kind of one of, one of the guys that I was uh, playing music with, so I, like I said, I played violin, and he played stand-up bass. And he just kind of, you know, just talking through it and said, you know what, I'd like to try that. And he came with me a couple of times. And again, when that bug strikes, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing, and you're hooked on it. And he's been with me ever since. Nice. But, you know, we have uh, four DJs on staff, so we can do 
we typically try to do three weddings so we have one dj on standby mm. uh at the jic policy i guess the best way to put it mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so probably about 2010 so about well 11 years nice nice that's really smart to have the standby dj that's something with covid that i was like okay i can't just be a one woman show anymore yep. <laughs> yeah Got yeah it. the uh the the impetus for going that way was i was tired of saying no and realizing that I, by saying no i was giving somebody else money so finding somebody that wanted to do that was the natural progression of being able to spread the spread joy the way that we do things, which is a little bit different than uh, many DJs out there, and which is great. A lot of people, everybody does things differently, but uh, we try to uh, tell everybody's story and do it a little bit more more than just playing music and uh, cashing a check. Yeah. So you do a lot more than just, you know, DJing. You're also a master of ceremonies. You've gone to, you know, lots of conventions. You've written articles for Disc Jockey News and presented at Wedding MBA and Mobile Bee. And you, you even have a YouTube show. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the YouTube show because I don't know much about that. Uh, the YouTube show that was a couple of years back, it's called Deets, Beats, and Dancing Feet. And uh, John Young just kind of put a call out, hey, who wants to do something? And um, it was right around the same time that I really started digging into uh, learning and, you know, bettering, our, bettering my skills by going to things like Wedding MBA. That was the first, uh, first convention I ever went to. And um, I took my, my uh, DJ, Patrick, who was he's been with me since you know we we started this multi-op thing and we both went and it was unfortunately right after our wedding uh, my wife and i's wedding uh because we came back and said oh our wedding could have been so much better but anyway i digress um that was really the impetus of becoming more you know more involved in educating and trying to raise the bar for uh djs you know worldwide Deeds, Beats, and Dancing Feet is just a, it's a, there's, it's an extended program of different, different things that you can do to uh, raise the bar for you and make your client's experiences a little bit better. Yeah, I love that. And just, you know, focusing on making our relationships with our clients better and getting more intimate with our clients and getting to know them more. Um is something I've been focused on and it feels really good. You feel more comfortable going into a wedding with a couple that you have built a relationship with prior to the big day. And it was so sweet last weekend. I showed up and uh, the night before and to the venue and met the couple for the first time because they had flown from out of state and they both gave me hugs. And I was just like, by the end of the, the wedding, I was like, she's my spirit animal. Like, it was just like, I just felt, I just felt like, I just, I felt so emotionally connected to them. And um, during speeches, you know, everyone's crying. I'm about to drop a tear and it just, you feel part of the family at the end. And that's the way I want it to feel with my oh, clients sure. yeah yeah for sure and it's it, the the other side of that is when you get to know these people you want to do a better job because you have that personal relationship with them mm -hmm. so you want to do everything you can to make that wedding exactly or as close to exactly as they really wanted it to be because you now not only do you have skin in the game as a as a business owner as your reputation, but you have skin in the game with an emotional connection with them. When you know these people, again, they, they start to become, like you said, your spirit animal or part of your family <laughs> or def, at least part of your friend group. Yeah. Um, yesterday, it's, it's, a, it's Thursday. So on a Wednesday, I was called by a wedding planner uh, about a week and a half ago, a week and a half ago. Uh, this couple decided that they were going to have a wedding no matter what and they wanted to have it on Wednesday. This would they trying to get this wedding together and I said, eh, you know, th but they only needed a an officiant. So I'm like, okay, fine, you know. So I we signed the contract. I did a Zoom call with them kind of like this and just really talked with them 
And I got off the phone call, that, that Zoom call, and I got a text message saying, um, "What a what a great call! Uh, thank you so much for helping us out." And the wedding was yesterday, and there were eight people there, in the bridegroom, their four daughters, her mom, and her dad. That was it. And you think, and common wisdom would make you think that. Oh, well, that, you know, that's easy. You know, it, there's no stress involved there. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Because, again, it's such an intimate thing that they, that you, you realize that, holy cow, they only brought three people here, a photographer, a wedding planner, and me, mm-hmm. to this event. So that's how special that event was. And at the end of the night, uh, the the bride walked up to me and threw her arms around me and said, I, "We, we, we're friends now. I feel like we've known you for years, oh. and it's 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 like you said, it's really great to have that that connection, even after an event is over." Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm new at the officiating, and um, there was an inquiry for one on my wedding anniversary, which is <laughs> July 11th. And I was like, um, I don't know, I'm not sure. Like it was through my friend who's a planner. And I'm like, I, I think I think I could do it, but it's like such short notice that it made me nervous. So I was like, well, if this is gonna happen, like we need to get this going. So I'm um, so, um, curious, some advice just as a new officiant, like you said, you know, you meet with them, you do a Zoom, curious, like, like, I'm sure there's a lot of questions involved and then you get to customize the ceremony or I'm guessing you have a couple scripts and maybe you can show them and they get to choose or how does it work? I'm curious. We, I've got a, and I, I reached out to other DJs that do this because I, and I really wanted to make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm doing this properly and not doing that a disservice and then making it look bad for DJs that are being officiants. So I reached out to a couple DJs, uh, one of them, Mitch Taylor, who is also going to be one of our presenters for this. And he sent, you know, he sent me over, you know, kind of his worksheet and I got a couple of other worksheets and combined them. And basically it's, uh, you remember the old choose your own adventure books? I don't. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm much older than you clearly. No. So they were, there are these books where you would read and then it said, if you want to go here, read page five. If you want to go here, read, start reading at page nine. So basically what that is, is it shows a sample wedding ceremony and then you scroll down and this is a 28 page thing. So they go through and I create a Google document and share it with them with their name on it. And they can quite literally plug and play things into the different areas. And then, then we do a, a, phone, a Zoom call after that and we read through it together to make sure that it feels like what they want it to feel like for their wedding ceremony. Some people want a hit hard, hit fast, get out kind of wedding ceremony. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Some want readings and they want to bring uh, their, their religion into it. They want to bring in... Uh, some their personal, you know, like they might love a poem, for instance, or they love in a book and they want to have that kind of thing put into that. Or they want to have a little bit of their story, like how they met. They might want to have that in there too. So it's all, it's all extremely customizable for that reason. We want their wedding ceremony to be theirs. That was a big truck that just went by. <laughs> Can you hear that giant truck going by? Yeah. Perfect. So (laughs) what they want to do is they want to make sure that they have the wedding ceremony they want to have. And we want to make sure that we can give that to them. So we give them as many options as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Um, Sometimes I feel like my clients aren't the most technical, though. So if I was to say, here's 28 page Google Doc, (laughs) put your pieces together, they would be like, what? <laughs> but maybe mine wouldn't be 28. It wouldn't be 28 pages to start off. It would probably be, you know, five, maybe. Probably about five. Yeah. A couple of different options for introductions, a couple for charge to the couple, a couple different pronouncements, a couple different types of vows, yeah. a couple of different ring vows. And 
uh, you should be good to go. Yeah, I actually have been compiling a Google Doc of um, different ceremony scripts that I've found online. There is the Facebook group Wedding Officiants of uh, America, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, I have, I have started my research. Um, well, I haven't really gotten too deeply into it. The one that I did do, they already had the script and I was the DJ and their officiant couldn't make it. So I was able to fill in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So tell me a little bit about the conferences because uh, me, I haven't been to one yet. I am going to be at Mobile Entertainment Expo in Las Vegas in February, but I am wondering, um, are there a lot of similarities to them? the the biggest the, the the biggest similarity is that, and so I just went to uh, Midwest DJs Live, which was the first first conference since the Big C happened. Yeah, and um, it was very different. Again, it was still in this. Uh, where all of these things are happening and distancing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a lot different than the ones prior. The ones prior, uh, but the, uh, the biggest similarity between all of them is the conversations that are happening outside of the presentation rooms, outside of the workshops. It's the breakfast together. Breakfast together for me, that is, uh, that's a very... Um, very uh, that's a very vip group for me uh there's certain people that i have breakfast with every time i go to one of these conferences and those people are in that spot because they're the ones that i can unload with um they're the ones that we you know re rehash because we all have different viewpoints on a lot of the stuff what did you see yesterday that what, what's your biggest takeaway from yesterday uh what are you looking forward to today mm -hmm. and it's really kind of a game planning session um, lunches are usually pretty harried as, you know, as far as, uh, go grab something to eat and get back. And, but di the thing that the biggest similarity for all of them is the, after the, the show or after the day's over, it's finding people you don't know. That's my biggest key or my biggest takeaway from all of those is find somebody you don't know and mm -hmm. eat with them. Mm. Um, Patrick and I, when we went to wedding MBA that first time jumped into an elevator and we had these two guys jump into the into the elevator with us and we're wearing our we were wearing our a plus uh digital djs that was the name of our company uh polo shirts and hats and all of because that's what we thought we were supposed to wear <laughs> um and the guy said hey so you guys are djs huh i looked at my shirt yes captain obvious we are djs uh he said we're djs too we're going to have dinner um, at this place, um, give me your phone number, let's text, and uh, let us know what's going on. I'm like, okay, where, where are we going? Well, we're going to this buffet, it's $65 a person, and Patrick and I are just absolutely gobsmacked because $65 a person for dinner just seems asinine. But we went, to the, went back to our room and called our wives and said, look, we were invited to dinner at $65, don't think that somebody stole our cards. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> So we get there, and the people that are there, Ron Ruth, Peter Mary, Randy Bartlett, it, it just, and uh, Vicky Musney, Dave Turnier was the DJ that we met in the elevator. So, and just all of these pe people that I've, I know who they are because of the internet. And I'm like, holy cow. You know, it, it just that, that one thing that, have dinner with somebody mm -hmm. and especially have dinner with somebody if they ask you to go. Okay. Um, it, it's a, a huge, that, that dinner was huge for us and we ended up going to the hard rock cafe anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, that, that was probably one of the biggest things that I took away from doing any of these is eat with somebody you don't know mm -hmm. Cool. or sit with somebody you don't know. Yeah. So from the, the, um, uh, Midwest, what is it called? Midwest, Midwest DJs Live. That's what I thought. Midwest DJs Conference. Um, what what was there anything that stood out like new trends or something that you were like, wow, like big aha, like 
I, I must go home and try that. Is there any? Well, I, I did win a Bun DJ Command Center. <gasps> You're, oh yeah, you were the winner. I've ever <laughs> seen that. That's amazing. That must have been a highlight. I love winning stuff. <laughs> it, it was a highlight because I was talking about it being mine for a week and a half. I do that. Um, That's how you win. And I drove, I drove all the way from where I live to uh, Milwaukee, which is an eight and a half hour drive, because I because I knew I had to bring it back. <laughs> um, and I was standing in line and. Uh, uh, DJ Clife, uh, he's a guy that's in Iowa, I believe. I think he's in C. I think he's in Iowa. He's in one of those Iowa, Iowa type states. Uh, anyway, he was standing behind me, and I looked at him. I said, "Dude, don't buy any more tickets." And and he looked at me. He said, "I've already bought five hundred dollars worth." I said, "Well, that's really nice, but it's coming home with me, so don't waste any more money." And he bought a hundred dollars worth of tickets after I told him not to. <laughs> and he, he I, as I'm winning, he looks at me, he says, you jinxed me. I said, I warned you. <laughs> so, um, so the, the, other than that, the biggest <laughs> takeaway that I got from that, oh, my dog has jumped the fence. That's awesome. Uh-oh. <laughs> and just jump back over. Okay, that's, he's, he's Great Dane and Pitbull. He doesn't care. Fences oh don't matter. Um. <laughs> So the biggest takeaway that I got from that um, was, and it was one of the, the funniest things is, well, okay, there's two. One of them was to bring a facade to set up behind you so you can just put your stuff there and oh. not have to try to take it back out to your vehicle. If you, if you can do that, mm -hmm. I mean, get a Rockville facade for a hundred bucks and throw it up behind you, put some up lights in there and make it look like it's part of your stuff. Number two was... Um, it, the last speaker of the day or the, the last speaker of the convention actually he said that he was talking about how how to manage kids at weddings mm. and i've always been a, a firm believer that um kids are dance floor kryptonite um if there's a bunch of kids on the dance floor nobody's gonna dance because they're just gonna watch the kids dance which is fine Unless you don't like kids, who some people don't like kids. I mean, it's it's real life. It, it's Everybody's got their own stuff. Um, but he said, you have the possibility and you've got the power to make somebody famous for five seconds by saying their name in a microphone. <laughs> and that, that, that really stuck with me because it's... Well, A, it's extremely... It's so true. Uh, and that's anything from wedding party introductions toast introductions and of course if somebody requested a song he's just jumping over the fence over and over again <laughs> if somebody requests a song you say their name it makes them famous uh -huh. for that period of time mm. and the more people that you can make feel like they're famous at an event the better chance you have for referrals and repeat business Mm. So that yeah. was my biggest takeaway, I think, for Midwest. That's a great tip. Awesome. Okay, can I pause? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we are back. Let's talk about branding your planning. This is something that you have created, and um, tell us about it. Okay, so uh, branding your planning really came about from my first presentation at Wedding MBA. Uh, that presentation was called Becoming a Co-Creator. And that's really more um, a DJ being part of the planning process. And the way that we, uh, a lot of people, a lot of times, DJs are always talking about how they're being ghosted by their couples. And the reason that they're being ghosted is because there's no reason for them. They have no reason to uh, not ghost you. Branding your planning, what that does is it creates a... Um, a way for you to make the planning process memorable for them and that that goes from uh, naming the different steps in your planning process and for our a plus entertains uh, dj business the first step is the q and a plus meeting it's a question and answer meeting but we put q and a plus because a plus and that way they know it's us our, type, our second one is a detail-oriented meeting, and it's called the Type A-plus meeting. 
type A, very detail-oriented people, they gravitate towards that. When we talk about having a type A plus meeting during the sales process, we book a lot more weddings, especially for those type A clients that want to be involved in a lot of the details. And then the, um, the last meeting is called the A plus assurance meeting. And that's assuring that the wedding is A plus. It's about a month before the wedding goes over finalizing all the details. And that way they don't have to worry too much about us until the wedding day. They can focus on catering and guest counts and seating charts and all that other stuff and not have to worry about the DJ side of things because we've already got it taken care of. And so my next presentation at that point was the branding and planning presentation that was slated for the main stage of Mobile Beat 2020. That's right. So fun. That was so fun. I did present it virtually, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, brandingyourplanning.com has lots more details on how I can help you to make your branding process or your, uh, I'm sorry, your planning process fit in line with your, your branding. And that branding can be uh, anything, you know, like what you have going on in your state. Some like the state bird, uh, my wife's uh, rental company, her packages are Great Lakes. And whichever Great Lake, this Lake Superior is the biggest, you know, Great Lake. That's the top package for her uh, decor and design rental pro rental uh, process. So awesome. awesome. Well, I love that. And um, are you going to be um, speaking at any conventions coming up or have you applied? Have you gotten maybe <laughs> um, any I, inside this info? <laughs> This year, I'm taking a break from presenting. Mm -hmm. um, I was on a panel at Midwest DJs Live on mm -hmm. running your multi-op, which was very nice. Um, I've been on their panel twice. Uh, the first one was for, you guessed it, planning. <laughs> and during COVID, I did decide to get ordained as a minister. So that nice. made sense. And then, of course, uh, was also a uh, certified wedding planner. So uh, those are the things I did during COVID to keep me from going crazy and, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I'm going to focus on learning this year and uh, next year I'll probably start going back into the, uh, the presentation realm. Nice. Nice. Well, awesome. Do you have any advice for anybody tuning in that maybe is just getting started and is, um, thinking about turning this into an actual business the knowing numbers is a big part of it if you don't know what you need to make figure that out first mm -hmm. especially if you want to make this into a full-time career mm -hmm. you have to know what your numbers are you have to have a plan for retirement as well mm -hmm. and you know however you're going to make that happen uh, 401ks or IRAs that kind of stuff uh, having that plan in place before you even start diving into how can I make this a business is vitally important. Number two, referrals are, are big, especially through wedding planners. And playing the game for wedding planners is a big, is a big deal. A lot of wedding planners aren't super stoked about a DJ that is a certified as a wedding planner mm -hmm. and B that wants to be uh, extremely involved in the planning process. Uh, I, I like to be involved in the planning process, but I, as a, if I'm just hired as a DJ or a master of ceremonies, I don't care about what they're doing before they get to the wedding. I just don't care because it's not part of my thing, but the wedding planner doesn't need to tell me when we do the first dance or father, daughter, mother, son, that kind of stuff. Mm. So playing the game, finding wedding planners that appreciate what you do is a big deal. Um, and number three is uh, charge the middle of the road. Don't start out at $400 because if you start out at $400, you're never going to get to $2,000. Start out in the middle of, you know, find, call other DJs. Um, I've called the DJs in my market straight up and said, what do you charge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you charge? Believe half of that. <laughs> it's probably not. They're probably 
charging less than they say that they're charging you. <laughs> and um, if you really want to, you know, get into that, it's a little bit shady, but hire somebody to secret shop the people in your area. Oh, if for no other reason than to find out where that middle road is. Start in the middle. Start in the middle. By accident, you're going to book enough weddings to make a year worth worthwhile, especially in 2021 and 2022. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like that start in the middle because it's a it's a common topic online, you know, just starting out. What should I charge? <laughs> like, so very helpful. Well, thank you so much for being um, a part of this series. And how can we find you online and best support you? Well, uh, like I said, brandingyourplanning.com. If, if that's something you're looking into, uh, trying to change your planning process and make it a little bit more you, yeah. uh, check out brandingyourplanning.com. You can find me on Facebook. I'm there pretty much every other day. Uh, okay, it's every day. It's fine. <laughs> Um, who are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. Who am I kidding? I'm there. <laughs> I'm there more than I probably should be. Uh, Thomas Heath, and uh, I mean, ThomasHeathEvents.com is my uh, DJ page. So okay. if you want to check that out and see what we do. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Bye. Thank you. Bye.